Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to talk about more muscle organization and how that impacts its function. So the muscle organization, the type of muscle or pattern you're seeing, will affect the power, the range of motion, the speed of muscle movement in different muscles. So muscles are all going to be organized in these bundles of muscle fibers called fascicles. And how they're arranged is actually how we classify muscles. So there are four patterns of fascicle organization that you can see right here. We'll go through each of them. Parallel, convergent, pennate and circular. So let's start with the most common type. So most skeletal muscles are going to be called parallel muscles. All the fibers in the fascicle, they run parallel to the long axis of the muscle. So the example here, let's see where we have the, the biceps brachii is an example of a parallel muscle and so is the sartorius there in the corner. So parallel muscles, they're nice because they, you get a lot of movement. When a parallel muscle contracts, the, the muscle um, moves about 30% of its length. It shortens about 30% of its length as it kind of thickens there in the middle. So that's so it's, you get a lot of movement from a parallel muscle, but as we'll see, it's not the strongest muscle type that we have. Uh, but ten, so tension in parallel muscle, how much strength, how much you can move, or how much weight you can move with a parallel muscle is going to depend on its cross-sectional area. So obviously if a muscle is bigger, it's generally going to be more powerful. Um, one square inch of cross-sectional um, muscle will develop about 50 pounds of tension. So if somebody's bicep is twice as big as yours, it generally can generate a lot more force and move a lot more more weight. Same with all of the all the muscle types, but especially with these parallel muscles. So that's your parallel muscles, and the key example is going to be the biceps brachii there. But also you do see the sartorius. Then we have convergent muscles. So this is this is the, these are muscles where they start real broad, and all the muscle fibers come from different directions to converge on an attachment site, either a tendon, an aponeurosis, which is like a sheet-like flat sheet-like tendon, or a rafe, which is a thin band of collagen. You don't hear about those very much. So convergent fibers have muscle fibers that aren't running in parallel, like parallel muscles. They're coming from different directions and they're converging on their attachment. Reason that's so important, and the textbook example here is the pectoralis major, is you'll see that there are pectoralis major fibers that run down, straight across, and up. So this, the, 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 these, uh, these type of muscles, your convergent muscles, are going to allow for all sorts of different types of movements. And this is why some muscles, you have to treat them like they're more than one muscle. So the pectoralis major, talking about it as one muscle is totally fine. But like if you're a strength training athlete or if you're a, a power lifter or a bodybuilder, you don't treat the pectoralis major as one muscle. You do things to strengthen the upper pec, the middle pec, and the lower pec, or, or upper and lower, especially the upper and lower pectoralis major. You treat them separately because the fibers run in different directions, different movements will strengthen different parts of convergent muscles if you're trying to strengthen them. But it also allows the pectoralis major to do a whole lot more because you've got muscle fibers running in different directions. All right, so that's a, those are convergent muscles, pectoralis major being the key example there. Then we have your pennate muscles. So pennate muscles, I always kind of think of like the, um, I don't even know what you call it, the thing at the end of an arrow that, uh, where the where the, the the feather on the on the end of an arrow. So pennate muscles, they form an angle with the tendon. So these, you're not going to get near as much range of motion from a pennate muscle as you will a parallel muscle. But because of their arrangement, you can cram more muscle fibers, more myofibrils specifically, into a square inch. So they're going to develop more tension. So for parallel muscles, think... Uh, more more range of motion, more movement. Convergent muscles, they can they can allow for movements in multiple different directions because fibers are coming from different directions. But pennate muscles are going to be really powerful. They're going to be able to develop the most tension. So you'll see that pennate muscles can be further broken down into unipennate, bipennate, and multipennate. So let's see. Uh, unipennate would be the extensor digitorum there. All the muscle fibers are on one side of the tendon. That's a unipennate muscle. Bipennate muscles, the example there would be the rectus femoris on the bottom. Bottom, you're going to have muscle fibers on both sides of the tendon. And then multipennate muscles, that's going to be your deltoid there. The tendons are, are actually going to branch within the muscle. So there's actually large tendons that are inside that deltoid that you cannot see. So that would be a multipennate muscle. So the exact member, the advantage of the pennate muscles would be the amount of force they can generate, the amount of tension they can generate. Then the last group is the circular muscles. See at the top there, the orbicularis oris. These are also also called sphincters. So they open and close 
and guard entrances to the body. So the orbicularis oris can compress the, the lips, orbicularis oculi closes the eyes. So those are skeletal muscle sphincters. Most of our sphincters are going to be smooth muscle and involuntary, like the smooth muscles, uh, that, uh, the sphincters that allow stuff to move from the stomach into your small intestine, that kind of thing. All right, so those are the four different ways that we, we classify muscles based on fascicle organization and arrangement. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.